All right, guys. So today we got something a little bit different on the channel. Um, obviously, those that's watched for a while know that I do a lot of photography and videography for different bands and stuff like that, local bands. Obviously, with doing band support and helping those guys out, there's a need for merch and stickers is one of them. So we looked on Amazon and we found a vinyl cutter by Vever. V E V O R, and it was very affordable. So I decided since my buddy owns a custom sign shop, you know, I've seen Justin before on the channel. He's got a big store in Tupelo and he does tons and tons and tons of vinyl stickers and stuff like that. We get Justin to help us with the video, so we're going to unbox it. We're going to see how hard it is to operate. We're going to test out the software that comes with it and see how well it works so who knows maybe a wash maybe great but today will be the review of that vinyl cutter so let's get this So Justin has dealt with several different brands of cutters and has experience using different cutters and stuff. So he will be able to give us a really good review on everything. Oh, so a little bit of iron. Yes. So it comes with a red roll and a black roll of vinyl. This is transfer tape. It's required for picking up your vinyl. They also send some clear transfer tape, it looks like. I don't use either one of these brands, but uh, probably like the clear myself better. But depends on what you're doing. So we have a USB. It probably has our software on it. A little bit of instructions, cable, USB cable, power cable, our nuts and bolts. This is an old serial cable. I hope we aren't going to use that. Um, here's just your different cutter blades. They do different thicknesses or different hardnesses of material. Uh, generally, you can get away with one for most applications. A little utility knife for weeding, a little squeegee. Uh, there's our signed master software. So that's the software we'll be using to actually do the cutting. And a little manual. Okay. This is a small platen. Basically, it's um, it allows you to work with and handle very small pieces of material, so that uh, little little pieces that normally would just be trash because it can't handle it, you can put on this kind of a board and then you can still cut it and use it. That's what this is for. Oh, there's a couple more rolls of vinyl in here. Um, okay, this, this is the thinnest magnet material I've ever seen. It could be good or bad, I have no idea. Um, but it is magnet material, what that is. This, this is actually for the catch. You put it underneath the machine and it um, won't catch the roll if you're cutting long rolls. So, it's got more vinyl in it. So more vinyl. We got white, white blue, blue, and yellow. yellow. So you get five total rolls of vinyl. Looks like there's just a couple feet on there, maybe. Maybe five to ten feet, maybe. Which, if you're doing little stuff, that's actually quite a bit. See, Justin does big stuff. He even does like truck wraps and huge signs and lots and lots and lots of stuff. So let me put this down. I'll help him get all this together and then we'll put it back on. Alright, 
so all the pieces is in the bottom um, so you have to take it out all the way to the bottom of the cardboard box because there's some pieces in the very very bottom but it's pretty simple it's got number two Phillips screws that go into these caps here which require a number three and what we're using is just the number two in the drill and the number three on the cap These don't have to be super tight, so I'm trying to just pinch it with my finger and tighten it. That seems to give enough resistance. So I'm gonna just stick with that. If you do it too much, you'll just end up crushing it. We don't need to do that. You do want to make sure that um, your grooves are to the top <clears throat> because these rollers actually sit into these grooves. So obviously it goes that way. They did make them all symmetrical, so you don't have to make sure you're putting one in the front, one in the back, or left or right. It doesn't matter. And as long as you put it on the right side of the leg, it shouldn't affect anything, which is nice. Okay. All right, as you can see, the wheels just press into that plate, and it's got four screws that'll put it to that. I think upright brace yeah. so they just press right in very very easy and I've got my four screws and they just line up to these little C's in the aluminum extrusion and they'll actually create their own grooves so I'm just going to line them up grab my handy dandy drill Started on just enough to hold it still. And I don't want to over tighten these, so I'm going slow. <clears throat> it's not underpowered, I'm just barely giving it any power. If you strip it out, then you can put a bigger screw in. And obviously the other side here will get the same treatment with that plate and the two wheels and the four screws. So that's, that's one side. That? All right, so you can see we got the completed stand together. And the way this works is it's got like a recessed button cap. And the screw goes into it and goes into that same C channel as before. Here's, here's the example. Um, so here's the cap that goes in there. And then you have a short little screw. And you have to make sure that it comes through the hole, which is a little bit tedious. There it goes. Yep. And then you put that in, screw it in. And then hold that center frame in. So that's pretty much the frame of the plotter or cutter, or whatever you call it. And we have our two rollers. And these are your media, media holders and it will hold your rolls of material mm -hmm. to feed into the machine. Cool. So and we also, if you want to hand me that, that one, yes, excellent, good, good uh, mind reading there. This is your media catcher. So this looks right here on the end. You don't have to use this, but again, if you're doing long prints and you want to just let it cut and not get all over the floor. This will keep you out of the dust of the floor. And that's it too. Cool. So we'll get the uh, cutter put on there next and uh, show you guys what it looks like when it's all together. Actually putting a cutter on there will be super easy. So just take my whole cutter. I'm going to make sure your face is towards the front. And I guess this is ambidextrous so it doesn't matter which way you set it up, you just want your rolls in the back. And then there's four little feet. There's four little feet on the bottom. And those little feet just go in the holes. And that's how it, that's how it falls on here. And that's it. it. It's not actually affixed to the base at all. 
So you never want to pick it up from the, the base, thinking right. you're going to take the base with it. But if you need to move it, you can just take it off okay. and take your base. Cool. So it was quite convenient. Quite easy. So we, we took that little cover off that was here, and then underneath here we found a little test sample, which is nice. Of all of the cutters I've ever purchased of any price point, they've never given me a test saying, hey, it works. So that's kind of nice that, it, that they had done that to, to test it first. So and you can peel it off. Yep, totally worked good. So let me cut this free. Never used these fancy cutters before. Butter. And that is the cutter completely hooked up, ready to go. Alright, so on this end is where you have a USB and your communications cable. And the other end is where you hook your power. It's just a regular like a printer plug. It does have a fuse and an on and off switch. So we're installing the software and then we'll get everything hooked up and see how it works. Alright, so we elected to go with the USB cable. You can see we got it hooked in here. Um, when he plugged in the jump drive, it shows a bunch of different videos on how to hook up the stand and, and connect everything. Um, but when he went to install the software and asked for the serial number, so that's going to be in the CD case on the yellow sticker at the top. That's what you use to get your software installed and ready to go. That's so a very simple question that asks about whether or not you want to use metric or inches. So just choose whichever you want and we're going to select our cutter we have. So as soon as we get the software installed, we'll cut it back on and show you guys kind of how it all works and go from there. Alright, so we've got it all hooked up, the power is there, the software is just finishing downloading and I don't know if I can get this to show or not because it's so bright, but it says speed 600 millimeters a second and force is 150 grams. That's what it was set from, um, from the factory. So we're going to just see how it does on the first run and see if it cuts all the way through and cuts correctly. And Justin was saying as the blade doubles, you'll need to increase the force just because obviously the blade's more dull. So it's probably some trial and error that goes along with that. Yeah, I'm sure that there's actually going to be a test mode to like do a test cut. I'll figure that out and then we'll, we'll let you know how to do that. Anytime I'm switching materials or doing anything of any importance or say I haven't run a material for a while, maybe I've been using the blade for other things, I always do a test cut because if you don't have enough material to do it again, you want to check it first. Um, there's no guarantees that it will be perfect just because you've tested it and that it looked like it was being fine, but it almost always works and it's definitely worth the time to just test it. I'm sure it has one. I'll let you know when we figure that out. Okay. Here's our vinyl. I just took the tape off, uh, so there is a little bit of a sticky residue. This is, I would consider, a very uh, beginner grade vinyl. It's great to test on, to learn on. It's probably a very inexpensive vinyl. As you can see, it's, it's very, very thin. I can see all the way through it. Um, I don't know what the longevity is. I don't know anything about it. I just know, for me, I would not deliberately order this material to work with. Um, to be honest, anywhere you purchase vinyl and like pieces, generally Oracal 651 is the most common. It's not the highest of the high end, but it's a very good middle grade. It still has a seven to nine year outdoor life. It's a good vinyl. Uh, if you're gonna make something that you want to last outside, that's probably where I'd start. Uh, you can get more expensive vinyl. In fact, I have a piece in the back. We'll probably try cutting it before I leave. That's for car wrap vinyl. It's actually it's a very specialized vinyl. And uh, it's definitely thicker, so we'll see how it cuts that, but I'm sure it'll do just fine. So here's how we load it the first time. Every single cutter has a little bit different way that the pressure feet operate. This type of cutter has, has some good features is the fact that 
each foot is controlled individually by its own pressure release. So um, this is released and in the down position is with pressure. So you want to make sure they're all up and then you can move it to wherever location you want. Now this machine is nice because if you turn, if you come around to the front here, you'll see this is your grippy roller. That's what actually grabs the material, pushes it against this, and allows it to move it forward and back. Now a lot of cutters, and definitely your more expensive cutters, only have a couple rollers. They're maybe a little more grippy. Um, this one's, I mean it's definitely toothed, but it's not as toothy as some that I have. But you can put these rollers anywhere as long as it's not right here. So it even says right here, it says no pinch roller. So if you put your roller here, and it says right there, no pinch roller, it won't work because it doesn't have anything to push against. So just as long as it's in here, you're good. <clears throat> so you can do any size of material so long as you don't have to put your roller right there. Now another thing that you want to consider, and we'll find out in a minute, I don't know for sure. Um, some cutters know exactly the width of the material and some don't. So I want to set this as far over to the left that the cutter will let me. Oh, so I see right there? I can't put it there. Right. I want to put it right there. That's the furthest left I can go. So by holding this nice and kind of tight, I'm going to move this over and I want to line that and I'm going to just push it down and that one's locked. Then I'm going to take this one to the other side and you want it all the way to the other end. And we'll push it down. And then this one you just sit anywhere in the middle as long as it's not right here. It doesn't really matter. Just close to the middle. So, I've never played with this. This is the first time I'm looking at it. But I see it says test. And I just realized i got to put my blade in. That's really easy. I'll show you how to do that. That's so bright you can't hardly <laughs> read the screen on it because it's, it's just so bright. But the, it says reset, offline pause, setup, test, and origin, and then the directional buttons. So this is kind of cool. It comes with some extra pieces. Um, not sure what that is. This is a tool to let you draw with a pen. So you can actually put a piece of paper in here or something, and you can draw with this pen rather than cutting, which is nice. Um, most of your expensive cutters don't even have that option. Um, it comes with a little fuse to replace your fuse, a tool that we may or may not need. I don't know where you're going to need that, but obviously you'll need it for something. It comes with the three blades as we showed you before. Is that a common blade, do you think? I believe it's going to be a, ro a Roland style blade. We'll find out. That would be super friendly if it is. And yes, it is. So this is the same blade that the Crickets use. Okay. And because of, <clears throat> because of the wonderful company Cricket, whom I met the owner of and he's a great guy, <clears throat> he has put these into every single Walmart, <clears throat> um, Hobby Lobby, any, any craft store. It's because of the Cricket machine uh, has made these available easily to anyone. And the biggest difference you're going to see between this machine and the Cricket machine, although Cricket machine is nice, it's very small, and it's very slow. It right. does a great job. It does it slowly. So, so this is definitely, I would consider, an upgraded version of a Cricut. So there's three blades. Are they all the same, or each they one are, different? They are almost for sure different angles. I don't know if you can see this, but here's the angle of the blade. Yes. The red tip traditionally means a 45 degree blade. Okay. Um, yeah, so you see this is a 0.25 millimeter, a 45 and a 15 millimeter. I think that's how that, I don't know if that's what that means. I thought that's what that means, but the other two measurements don't mean anything to me. So this is what I expected. This is a 60 degree blade. This blade is for thicker materials. Um, I don't hardly ever use this blade, but if you were trying to cut, I don't know, a rubber for gaskets or something, you might need this extra thick blade. They also, they do make some craft materials and stuff that are fun, that are thicker. Um, that's what you would use this blade for. And then this one I'm going to guess is a lower profile blade. 
and I believe it is. It's definitely a different profile. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a different profile. The tip is all the way towards the back on this one, pretty much, and this one it's it's pushed forward. So it's uh, it's definitely a different profile. It's definitely a lower angle. I would use the red one okay. primarily. Um, if you were cutting very, very thin material, say doing heat transfer shirt material, possibly the yellow one could do a better job of that. Um, the 45 is going to do a fantastic job. That's what I would use first. So this is our blade holder. There's a couple different adjustments on this, and, and I'd say this is a pretty decent blade holder. Um, my Roland cutter... I have two different blade holders and one has this and the other one doesn't and I hate the one that doesn't. This allows you to change the blade easily. You just push this button down, grab the blade and take it out. It's held in by magnets okay. and there's actually a little uh, bearing on the back side and it allows the blade to spin. This is what's called a drag knife blade. So as you move the blade around your material, it turns in order to make that cut. Then right here you have a fine adjustment. So you can loosen and, and tighten these little big bolt screws on the top. And that will actually change how deep the blade protrudes out from the holder. Um, according to the manufacturer, you're supposed to barely have this to the depth of the material you're cutting. Um, I've never operated that way. It has always caused me a problem. I just operate it with it out about that much which is probably three or four times the thickness of the, the material and that's what works the best for me but the manufacturer will tell you this should only be the thickness of the material then you're changing it all the time and uh, it just I just don't agree so now I'm gonna put the blade in and this is actually a nice holder too the I'm not sure how much I'm gonna have to open it the nice thing about this holder is that it's not re relying on friction to hold it. I don't think. I think it's going to grab... Well, maybe not. Nope, it is. It's, it's a friction holder, which isn't a problem. Um, a few of them actually grab that ring. But we'll just put that in there, and we just want to snug it up. Um, we're not trying to kill anything. Don't, don't fight this. You'll just break it and then it will never work until you replace this, so don't do that. I'm just finger tight. Um, I don't know how to explain that, but it's, it's not very tight. So it says right here, test. I'm going to guess that is what I want. Also, it says my force is 150, so I'm going to try changing my force. So on this machine, I believe I'm going to press pause and offline, and this is going to ask me right now if I want to move it, so that's me, that's me move. That's very fast. Generally, they're much slower than that, so this one, this one will book it. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's try pushing it again. Nope, because that didn't work. That only lets me move it. Um, we can change our origin, so if I click on here, I can put it where I want, and I can say that is where I want it to start, and that'll give it as a home, which is very important if you're using, say, that plastic sheet with smaller pieces. You can put it right on the corner of the piece where you want to cut, and then you can start there. Or if you'd already cut on this material and you wanted to, to cut some more stuff, you could set your origin there. Let us see, how do we change? Yeah. Yeah. E speed, so this is our speed. I don't want to change, well actually the speed is very, very fast. I don't, that's interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Speed is very, very fast. I don't know what that means, so I don't want to mess with that. Okay, so here's our force. Actually, this is just on our main screen. Um, that's very easy. That's very nice. I'm going to change this to what I would generally start my test with a brand new blade. I would start at 60. And we're just going to hit test. And I bet that's going to cut me a little square. And it did. Um, I'm just going to off. Turn it off, zoom that out a little bit. And you can see that actually cut two squares, one inside of the other. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try pulling out some of these pieces. 
and it did a fair job cutting that. You do not want to cut with more pressure than's necessary. And to know if you have enough pressure, you want to take your whole piece out and see if it just marked the back. And if you look at it really carefully, you can kind of see the square that is there. Now, <clears throat> I would probably increase the pressure just a little bit so I get a little bit more indention into the backer, but definitely not a lot more. So we're gonna we're gonna say no, we're good. We're gonna say offline. That puts us back to our original origin, and we're gonna put our pressure up probably just one. So now it's at 70 grams. I'm also going to change my origin because obviously I have this little hole here. I don't want that one. So I'm going to move over. And it's using the tip of the blade as home. So you just, just make sure your tip of your blade is over far enough. You're going to hit origin. And now we're ready to cut some. Okay. And well, that's a pretty simple setup on that. That's pretty yeah. nice. Yeah, after you've done it a couple times, it's very easy. There's, there's nothing difficult about that. Um, it's a very nice, simple, straightforward system on, on that. So now we can start from scratch on here. I'm going to actually go back to Corel. And that is my preferred program. You can probably use any program you want <coughs> to design your images. Uh, the Sign Master program has the option for a drying capability, but it comes without it. So you'd have to pay an additional fee. I don't know what that fee is, but I don't, I don't know this software. I know Corel very well. I don't want to learn something else. I'm going to use Corel. If you know another program, I am just saving to an SVG. And uh, there's a lot of programs that will save to SVG. Um, I want to say Inkscape is a great program. I don't know it very well. I use it for a couple things but it will save to an SVG and you could use that and it's free. So we're just gonna do a little test. So I clicked on my square, I clicked on my square tool, pulled me out a little square. Now I'm gonna click on my uh, text tool and I'm just gonna write a word here. And once I've written the word, I can pull it out to whatever size I want. And then if I change to my pick tool, I can then change the font. And we'll just pick a fun font there. Don't really care what it is. Now I put a square around it because it gives you a definite edge to pull your vinyl out. If you're doing a lot of vinyl, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Um, you'll get used to weeding things and you won't want to square around every single item. but. Just doing one little thing, it's convenient to have a square to grab a corner and pull it out. It also allows you to leave the sheet if you are actually gonna use that image right now. You can pick it up and leave the sheet whole and use the origin to continue using that piece of material. So it's a good way to use your material. Now something that we've already tested and found out, this software does not recognize the fonts. At least not my fonts, not the way we're doing it. So in Corel Draw, all you have to do is convert all your text into curves. And you can come, I believe, to edit. I know how to do it with the keys. Um, object. And all I want to do is convert to curves. So there it is. It says convert to curves under object. It's control Q, which is normally what I just control Q, convert everything to curves. It wouldn't matter. Once it's saved to cur curves, then I'm just going to file. I'm going to tell it to export. And the nice thing with Corel Draw is that once you've done an export and a save, it will remember what you did last time. And it will continue to do that in the future. So I've done export this time. And I'm going to say I want an SVG. SVG. And I've already named it Hello Test and I've saved it as a Corel Draw file. And that's why it came up with the name. It will not save the name in Corel Draw unless you've saved it as a Corel Draw file first. After it's been saved once, it will save that name and try to use it every single time if you want it to. So now I'm going to hit export. And now there's a couple things you want to check with this. It's going to come up here with how, what is your drawing precision and everything. You want to make sure it's one to one. There's a lot of options here. 
and you could say one to ten thousand, and it will come up as a very large file when you open it, and that's because of this conversion right here. Mm -hmm. So one to one, that's what you want. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I already know that that is saved to my desktop because that's where I told it to. I'm going to delete this image and bring in my new one. So file, import, Control I is also a shortcut, and Hello Test is one I just picked. So hit open. And it brings out this little uh, setter, um, and we're just going to click it on the page. Oh, that is not the one I wanted. I need to save this as a different name so I know where I'm going. File, export. Oh, I did it to downloads, not desktop. My bad. Export. Now, as you see, as I said, it saved my settings. So it's saved it in an SVG, so I don't have to continually change that. If I did a save as, it will not do that. It will always want to save it as a CDR, so you want to do export. Come back to here, file, import, hello test, open, drop it. So that's my new one. That's what I want. So this is as far as we've ever gotten before. I've never sent anything out from this cutter. We'll, we will see what happens. Now, okay, so we've saved it in Corel Draw as an SVG. We're going to come back into here, File. We're going to Import. We're going to find that file. Another thing that makes this much easier, if you're saving to a, one folder all the time, and that's how I do it, I save the one folder. Um, I know some people like save everything under each person's name for who they're doing the job for. That works for them. but. If you'll, if you'll just change the way it sorts, and I'm going to show you how this goes sort. See how it says date modified? Most of the time this is not there. So you hit more. You'll scroll down a few times. It's all in order. So you're just going to go to date modified. Um, date. Why do I not see it? I know it's right here. Date. Oh, maybe it's not showing up there because it's already selected. Interesting. Anyway, you can select any of these things to sort by. Date modified is what I want. It's not showing up in this list, but it is already active. So maybe, oh, there it is. It's at the top. So that's fine. You want to make sure that date modified is selected. Then when you click that and close it, you, you don't want to click on the actual object to try to get off of it. Right click, sort by date modified. That way it'll put the thing you saved last right at the top. You don't have to look for it, search, try to figure out where it is. It's just right there. So I hit open. Open. And now it gives me this little icon to place it wherever I want on the page. I don't know as of yet what that reference is. Um, but I'm ready to cut it. That's what I want. Let me hit cut. And it opens up and it shows me right here. It says it's 3.168 inches by 1.415 inches. The media width, um, I guess I have to enter this. So you have to put in what your media width is if you want it to understand the reference. So I think this material is 24 inches. So I'll say it's 24 inches and you see that adjusted on the screen. Job name is untitled. Unless you're going to do a bunch of it, I don't know why you'd care to have that saved. Right here, it has the ability to rotate it. So depending on what you're doing, that might be a better use of your material. You also can mirror it. That is very important if you're doing transfers, like heat transfers. Like all of your shirt and your heat transfers have to be mirrored. So you can mirror it right here. You don't have to design it backwards. You can just mirror it right here if you want. Um, I believe the absolute position is probably going to reference where I have set the head, but I don't know for a fact. Um, oh. Okay, so that is referencing where it is on the sheet um, off of that first page. So if you want to reference the sheet off the first page and put it exactly, you can. You can. That's kind of neat. Um, registration marks is for um, further processing. So if you were going to do multiple layers of colors or something, you could use registration marks to make sure those colors line up. 
and you can also separate by color. Now I only have one color, so it's not going to do anything by doing that. But say I had black and yellow and green, and I was going to layer them, you could do the separate by colors, and it would it would put them as separate files, and you'd cut each color individually. And the registration marks would help you line them back up. So it's nice that it has it. Um, I'm not going to need it right now. Auto speed weed. I don't know what that means. And then the auto weed box. That's going to put that box that I built around it automatically. Um, as you see that it showed up there. Um, I didn't know it would do that, so I put it in there to start with. But you can do it right here on the, on the uh, software. That looks like it's possibly doing the same thing, but I don't need it. So then our cutter control. Uh, this is your blade offset, so you can do some tests to figure out what exactly it's supposed to be. I'm going to leave it alone. Um, I don't think that I'm going to need to mess with it, so I'm going to leave it alone. And yeah, I don't know how to get back to where it was. Maybe scroll to the bottom on that right hand part. The little gray slider. Oh, yes, that worked. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm. It does an area test. That's neat. So you can click on this, and I'm going to guess that that's going to move. So if you look at the cutter, I'm going to hit yes, and I bet you it's going to make a square. We might not be in the right mode. Nope, I just reset it. Sorry. So I'm going to send that back to where I want. That is fast. Origin. So that should be ready. Show to buy jobs. Alright. Area test. Send area test. There it goes. So there. I'm going to do it again. Okay. So that's showing how much material it's going to use. Obviously, this is a very small print, but that is neat that it'll do that. Uh, so you can test to make sure. And then it gives me the option to cut now. We'll see if cut now works. So if you hit pause offline, that'll let you feed it out. No, it didn't. No. It did it exactly what I expected. All right, so. That is perfect. I guess it was the box that was over it. Maybe this side of the box as well. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's only cutting at the blade, and then when you're not knowing what you're looking at, it does look like it's doing things weird. Yep, that well, cut exactly it. as expected. So, what's your thoughts on how easy it is to set it up? I don't think it's very hard. Uh, I'd say uh, we complicated ourselves because I, I bypassed an option, and, and actually when you first turn it on, it says, do you want to activate it? And I thought that was trying to get me to buy an upgrade. And so we bypassed it. And that was where all of my issues happen with this cutter. Um, don't bypass it. Just say, yes, I want to activate it and go through that. It was very easy. I just wanted to sort of put our email address in there to, to activate our account. And, and then it worked exactly like planned. The only things you have to do is just figure out which software you want to use. I would convert everything to curves. Don't leave anything as a font when you actually save it out to cut. And it seems like it works just fine. You're, the only things you're gonna mess with, you're gonna mess with your cut pressure, and sometimes you're gonna mess with your speeds. Because if you're cutting too fast on a thicker material, sometimes it'll bunch up. Um, but otherwise, I, I'd say it worked very, very well. So if they use CorelDRAW, they need to save it as a VSG? 
I would save it as a VSG no matter what. There are m lots of options, but VSG is a very common option, and EPS would also work. Um, but VSG is, or SVG, I'm sorry, it's SVG. It's okay. not a VSG. Sorry. SVG cool. is a very, very common format. It will work with almost any cutter, so I would just save it in the SVG. However, if you're trying to do anything, maybe you're making a master template, always save it as a CDR first. Um, I've been using CorelDRAW for years. I love it. It is my favorite program. I have Illustrator. I don't like Illustrator. Not to say it's not a wonderful program. I just don't like it. But it will save as a CDR almost every time. If you save it as any other format, you might crash. or be more likely to crash. And if you haven't saved it as a CDR first, then you have to start over. So I would just make my file, save it as a CDR. It's very easy. That'll allow you to give it a name. And then when you export it as a SVG, it'll already have that exact same name. And you can save those files, your cut files, to a particular folder. And then you just drag them over into the software. The fact that you have to save it is an inconvenience, but it is a, it is a wonderful thing that it forces you to do. Um, and it makes you have a backup always. Yeah. Um, my printers make me do that, my cutters don't. So I have lots of files I don't save because I don't have to save them. And it bites me in the butt. It bites me in the butt. This, <laughs> at least this program makes you do that, and that is not a bad thing. It is a slight inconvenience for a huge benefit. Uh, I'd say it's a very decent, you know, mid-range. It's a decent price if you're comparing this to a Cricut. It's barely more than that. And you have full freedom. You can do whatever you want with it. And uh, I think it's very capable. So for this cutter's three eighty five ninety nine. Yeah, so not bad. Three hundred eighty six bucks for free shipping. I think your Cricut's going to be three hundred dollars, um, based on the last time I checked the price. So you're just a little bit more than that, and it's going to be five to ten times as fast. It's going to give you much greater size capability. Um, it's and they have smaller ones than this, you know. But the purpose, you know, why we want a big one in that, because, like, if you're doing band stickers, you know, you could probably put 10 of them across through there. Yeah, if you're trying you to do... print a whole lot of area quickly. Yeah, if you're trying to do group stuff or doing a lot of something, this is far, far faster than any of your little hobby cutters. Now, I, I totally admit they're a good quality machine, the Cricut is a good quality machine that, that does some stuff that this one won't do. But if you're trying to do volume, you're trying to do speed, you're trying to do any of that, this will totally destroy that. Um, be far better to do that kind of application. Um, and your vinyl, you can get larger, bigger... Yes, yeah, something that people don't realize, um, especially if you're just buying little pieces of material at a time, I get a lot of people that come in and they do shirts and they can only buy a 12 inch by 12 inch piece because why? Because the Cricut requires you to use that sheet to hold the material. But when you do that and you do any decent sized image on a shirt, you can only get one image on that piece of material. That's it. And right. then whatever's left over is garbage or you can use it for little coloring things. When you can use a roll print, when you can use a cutter that'll work off of a roll, you can stack those prints right next to each other so now that four or five inches of waste just goes on to the next print. And so now you can get five prints out of the same material that would have only gotten four. Mm -hmm. And that's just a problem with the Cricut. It, it wants to use that sheet to hold the material, which means it's not on a roll, which means you only get the one piece out of it. And it's probably a lot more economical to buy the roll than the If you're sheets doing any too. volumes of any kind, it is. It is. So, there you go. A guy that uses cutters every single day to make a living with. Yeah. So I started with a cutter like this. And this one, I like this one better because it would actually let me use Corel. My first cutter wouldn't. I had to use their software. And that's why I don't use it today. There you go. All right, guys, so if you're looking for an inexpensive cutter, all right, there you go. It's the Vever. This model is the KW870D. So.
take a look at them. They're on Amazon. The link will be below in the description if you need it. And like always, guys, thanks, Justin, for coming and setting this up and doing a no professional review. So that's always nice. Guys, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. Check over for merchandise. Cool tools and discount codes down there. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Y'all have a great week. See ya.